Welcome to Cellmap Machinery. This video is directed at companies that currently don't use CNC press brakes. You may be a company that has an NC press brake or may have a manual system with a manual back gauge, but I'd like to prove to you whether you're a small company, whether you do uncomplicated parts, whether you do small batch work, that a CNC press brake could be the right thing for you. So you may be a company that does simple and uncomplicated folding and small batch work, and the word CNC could be off-putting. Now over the years of selling press brakes with customer feedback, I find there's three reasons for that. One, you believe these are expensive, so therefore you won't, can't warrant the cost. Two, you believe they're complicated, so you may not have the skill set to operate them. But three, you may not have the batch work quantity to also justify the cost. So in this situation, I'm not talking about one of our complicated CNC software systems like we have here, which is a 3D model. You can obviously see in different lights, see where the part is, or our interactive system, which is on the front of the beam. I'm talking about an entry level, simple to use system, which I'm about to show you. In this situation, a customer comes to a counter and wants something like this folded. Something quite simple, not too complicated. You have two 93 folds and two 45s with um, different lengths between bends. Now with your NC or your manual back gauge press brake, you'd have to set the machine to do the first fold, go through all the batch of 10, change the back gauge position to do your second fold, go through all the batch again, change your back gauge position and your angle to do your next two folds. This means you will pick those 10 parts up 40 times, which is very, very time consuming. With a CNC press break, you pick the part up once, do all the folds and put the part down finished. So this is our simple entry level ESA 630 control, which is very easy to use. It has a 2D drawing tool to help you draw parts that you need to fold. I'm now going to show you how easy it is to draw and fold that simple part I've just been holding. You need to press the new graphic button. Ask you for a few factors like width of plate and thickness, which you have to put in. So width of plate will say 100 mil. Thickness will say two mil. Resistance, this is the grade of material. Nought to 30 is for aluminium. 31 to 50 is for iron or mild steel. 50 plus is for stainless steel. We're working on mild steel, so we'll say 45. Then ask you for the die. Obviously you've got a four way V die. So we need to insert that. Because we're folding two mil plate, we can get away with the 16 mil V. So that's part code one, with one for 16. We then need to insert the punch, which is the top tool. So here we are, pressing okay. And now we have the drawing, 2D drawing screen. So it asks us for a length at first. So we'll say 25 mil. Now, in terms of angles, you can either type in 90 degrees or 135 or 102 if it's a specific angle, or you can simply use the arrows which we'll use. So ask me for another length now, 50 mil. We'll go to the left now, 100 mil. We'll go down to an angle, uh, 65 mil. We'll go left, like that part I was holding, we'll say 25 mil. So here we have the part drawn. I need to calculate it now to make sure it's not gonna collide with the tooling or the machine by pressing optimize. Hasn't said no solution, so we can simulate now to see if everything's gonna be okay. First bend, second bend, third bend, and fourth bend. I can now press confirm and we're ready to fold. It also gives me a developed length of 254 mil, so we know we need to cut our blanks at 254 mil. So that's how simple it is to fold on our entry level CNC press brake. You saw me put the data into the machine such as the plate thickness, width and grade to efficiently folding on the machine itself. But most importantly of all, I've picked this part up once and put it down finished.